Hello YouTube. Sherbinka is a town and it's a federal city subject or settlement of Moscow, Russia. It's located 37 kilometers south of the center of Moscow. In October of 2021, the Museum of Moscow exhibited artifacts scattered across the field by a bulldozer. The swan bone found on the destroyed settlement in Sherbinka turned out to be an ancient magical object. From the side, uh, the Sherbinka settlement looked like a large field near the Pakhra River, covered with ramparts and divided in two by the highway to Domodedovo. In winter, residents of nearby buildings sledged from the ramparts and in the summer they arranged gatherings in the area. There was no sign saying that there is an archaeological monument here. It was never placed on the territory. But the locals, they already knew that these ramparts were the right ramparts. And that the mysterious people had lived here since the Roman Empire times. I want to tell you something for reference. A variety of non-Slavic tribes uh, resided or lived on the territory of the Moscow region. Not much is known about them. One of such interesting tribes lived compactly in Sherbinko. In the 1960s, excavations were carried out here. Uh, three treasures were found and a lot of interesting things were learned about this area. For example, it is believed that thanks to these people, these mysterious people, we in Russia and um, former Soviet countries have fairy tales about Baba Yaga. I will tell you more about this mystical creature and her resemblance to the modern depiction of aliens from outer space. Representatives of this culture, uh, the name is Dyakovskaya for it, buried their dead in the houses of the dead, semi-dugouts built in the forest. It is quite possible that such houses with a surprise served as the basis for the first Slavic settlers um, and the basis for the intimidating fairy tales, fairy tale hut of the Baba Yaga. Very interesting construction. Gotta put it in, in modern terms, uh, the supports it has and all the unusual traits it had, like turning around, moving, very interesting structure. The settlement was one of the most famous settlements of the Iron Age. It's written about it in basically all textbooks on archaeology in Russia. So it was the surprise of the Sherbinka residents. When, when on October, in, in October of uh, 2021, a whole platoon of construction equipment arrived there. Over the weekend, the shafts were dug in the soil, turning the territory in a, into a flat platform for the future construction project. Some stops, however, remain, and then thanks to the dedication of local residents. While some of them called the police and archaeologists, others behaved like the caretakers in the Tretyakov Gallery at the site of a vandal. They clung with a death grip to the bucket of the excavator. While the police were driving, uh, I held onto the bucket and I shouted into the phone, you've been driving for so long, come on, hurry up. Resident Elmira Antonova told reporters of the Komsomolska Pravda newspaper. The excavator, excavator operator shouted at me, mother, go away, and I answered, I won't leave until the equipment leaves. So thanks to the Shubinka residents, the builders were driven away by the neck, so to say. And the archaeologists wandered around the scattered space for a long time. They collected ancient artifacts and simultaneously dispersed the treasure diggers who had flown in like dung flies. Please see my video about such diggers or diggery in Russian slang and their exploits in the former USSR. I think you will like it. The link is attached to the description of this video. I put it up some time ago, but the problem doesn't go away. And I could make a lot of videos about their so-called exploits 
and uh, and the archaeologists uh, like in Ukraine who were actually killed trying to protect national treasures anyway all the most interesting things that the archaeologists managed to collect in that area are presented in the three showcases at the exhibition defenders of Sherbinka in the Museum of Moscow I, I think it will only stay there for like um, through the April of 2022 anyway among them are strange plaques and incomprehensible hooks and more what was discovered was added to what already had been known found half a century ago first it is a variety of arrows indicating that for the settlement well it wasn't the first time to defend itself from raiders or raids secondly these are the Diakovsky type weights incomprehensible things that are considered either a fishing sinker or a detail of a children's pyramid um, also third there is a jewelry including various earrings pendants for the what's called umbanoid or noisy types and in the form of a, of a waterfowl feet it was assumed that the cult of the swan uh, was practiced in these places but there was a lot of debate about it in particular because swans do not settle in the Moscow region and suddenly there is a fresh find that has made adjustments to the idea of fauna and religion archaeologists have discovered a sacred object a polished bone dotted with incompre incomprehensible icons in fact it turned out that it was the thymus bone of a swan so this proud bird still lived in these places the discovery was a real surprise for biologists and ornithologists the discovered bone is a source of incredible pride at the press event it was even called the swan of asia and gavatava in honor of the deputy director for science at the institute of archaeology of the russian academy of sciences the purpose of the bone is unknown most likely like ritual magical the artifact became the pearl of the exposition and therefore the voiceover of the swan quacking was launched to the halls of the museum the caretakers who will have to listen to this all day will not be envied Asia and Gavatova deputy director for science at the Institute of Archaeology of the Russian Academy of Sciences she said that the artifacts found are a small part of what was taken out along with the soil from those hills where they were digging the builders but where the developers and builders have put the soil that's another mystery scientists do not exclude that many wonderful discoveries are now located in the pots with flowers and flower bases where shards bones and arrowheads of the Shabinka settlement will be found for a long time but in general the scientists are optimistic the developer was fined nine million rubles uh, I think he admitted his guilt in the summer an expedition is planned to go through the preserved dumps a sad story can be a beginning of a new stage of research and the study of the settlement gives impetus to the preservation of what has not yet been destroyed and so on and so on meanwhile it is known for certain that the settlement was destroyed well to the point of a zero so to say and there are more questions about this than uh, you know that the land that was taken out in the unknown direction one of these questions is uh, you know how the developer managed to get a plot of land with an archaeological mo monument basically located there without any preconditions well Mikhail Karabko historian mentioned that archaeologists have a principle in order not to be looted we don't tell anyone anything we don't put up signs and we don't publish detailed maps so the diggers stay away because they make money on the stuff they, they take out from the ground illegally and you know the land is full of artifacts that's like my home town of Kiev was and they sell it there's a big black market for this anyway here's the result uh, for sure there was no security zone installed at the ar archaeological mo monument and the bulldozer driver uh, will be guilty basically 
<coughs> well, I say, I'm, and 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 of, excuse me, <coughs> sorry, and Gavatovay from the institute, which I mentioned before, she said the following. We also have a question why this monument was not included in the official government register. However, it was located on the territory of the bank of the Pakhra River in a water protection zone that is not subject to development. So you can see that real estate shenanigans are worldwide. I'd like to find out more about the, its bone and the inscriptions, but it's in the hands of the scientists. But let's look at what I promised you we would look at. Who was Baba Yaga? Well, some Russian researchers who have studied ancient myths, manuscripts, legends, and tales have compared ancient Russian folk tales to the contemporary knowledge. Baba Yaga, a strange and powerful character in Slavic and Russian folk tales, is the archetypal hag. She's an old ugly crone who has a terrifying appearance, emancipated emaciated like a skeleton. She is the guardian of the frontier between the land of mortals and the spirit world. Of all the strange characters of the Russian folktales, Baba Yaga is perhaps the one that occurs most frequently and is the best known. She is usually depicted riding in a stupa, mortar, sometimes fiery mortar, rowing herself along with a pestle. She also uses a broom. She dwells in a strange house, Izbushka na kurich noshkach, in Russian, I would say a hut uh, standing on chicken legs, in a forest. The house is described as a temporary abode. It has no windows, no doors, uncomfortable for humans and cramped. Like I said, it stands on so-called chicken legs or supports. Well, there was a Russian scientist and I really respected him, Yuri Rossius, a noted researcher of UFO phenomenon, who studied available accounts of the Baba Yaga uh, mythology. Her face, he concluded, was actually a description of a human-like unusual appearance. She, but her sex is really not determined, actually uses a fiery broom to guide the mortar. The mortar has some sort of fire underneath, and as it moves, Trees fall down. The mortar is propelled by devils. The mortar has an aerodynamical shape. Those who see Baba Yaga become mute. And if we were to compare her izbushka or the hut to the Apollo lunar module design, we would find striking similarities. Unlike American astronauts, when Baba Yaga would leave her module, she would behave in a strange manner. She destroyed mountains and caused pestilence and animals and kidnapped human children. Baba Yaga also charmed young men. They stayed with her, were questioned extensively, and in the end, she gave them knowledge of all things. Yuri Rossius interprets her actions in this fashion. Some aliens acted according to their program, incomprehensible to humans. They collected samples of flora and fauna. They brought with them unknown viruses, animals had no immunity against them. They contacted humans looking for the young and the intelligent to teach them skills and give them knowledge. Such humans were tested before initiation to the contact. These are but a number of the ancient tales of mysterious phenomena that have haunted Russia down the centuries. Surely some can be explained, but many others still leave us puzzled today, as the original observers were puzzled. They do, however, give us an insight into the way our ancestors describe what today we might term as UFOs. Please see my video, Mysterious Artifacts from the Mists of Time, about the stupas and the strange beings if that can be described like that, are found in an ancient temple in India. And what the stupas look like, and this is my interpretation, in no way do I mean to um, insult or, you know, this, anything else that uh, would bother any religious person. It's just my interpretation. Now, if you are in Moscow on a visit, here is how to get to the exhibition. You can get to the exhibition Defenders of Sherbinka um, 
you can buy the tickets to the permanent exhibition history of Moscow for children and adults and the price of I think it you know varies from like zero to 200 rubles yes it it will be there until April 3rd 2022 and the venue is Zubovsky Boulevard number two first building Museum of Moscow by the way the Museum of Moscow is one of the oldest museums of the city its collection was established on the initiative of Russian scientific community in 1896 the museum acquired more than 1 million um, articles depicting life in the city throughout its history uh, from Moscow's ancient beginnings to the present day or oh, that city has so many secrets and I, I will get into some of them later on um, very interesting uh, you know basically bordering on paranormal in many ways too well this collection contains the archaeological finds ancient tools jewelry bronze and stone items from the most ancient periods of Moscow history thank you for your attention to my work if you can support my research please do so you will see the links in the description to this video please like my video thank you